Hi friends, welcome to Sri Sai IT Hub. In this video of core Java programming, we are going to discuss the following topic vector class in Java collections framework. So first of all, we'll understand what are collection collections framework in Java. So Java collections means collection of objects or a group of objects as a single unit or a single object in Java program. What is framework? So framework means library. So library means package. So package to work with Java collections and that package is available for us in Java as java.util package. So in this collections framework, we have collection interface which is a top level collections interface. It is a top level base class or a base interface. Now under this we have four popular collections using which we can store collection of objects very efficiently. First one list collection. Second one set collection. Fourth one queue collection. Yeah, third one queue collection and fourth one map collection. So all these are sub interfaces for collection interface. So under these four popular collection, we have different classes using which we are going to work with collections framework. So why we have to use collection framework? What are the advantages of collections framework when compared to primitive data type storage, array storage, object storage or array of object storage in a Java program. In primitive data type, the size is fixed. We have to store only that particular data in a particular variable. Arrays, we have to store only same type of data and size is also fixed. Objects. In objects, we can store different type of data, but if we want to perform any operations on objects, we have to write it manually in our Java program methods and same as that of array of objects. So to overcome all these limitations, we have collections frameworks introduced in Java. So the first advantage is the size of any collection is dynamic. We can add we can delete, we can update data as per our requirement. So no need to worry about the size of a collection. It is dynamic in size. So in collections, we can store homogeneous, same type of data, as well as heterogeneous, different type of data. So both are possible. Next, every collection, we have predefined methods. So using this predefined methods, we can perform adding, deleting, updating, searching, sorting, displaying operations without writing any extra coding in our program. And fourth advantage is any data, any data type data in collections, it is stored directly in the form of object only, which is object class format. So if we store integer data, character data, boolean data, floating data, any data, including all the primitive data type values, everything will be stored in object format only. So coming to some important points here. So collections are only for objects. They are not for primitive data types. Second point. So collections is nothing but collection of objects only and third one in collections every data is stored in the form of object only so that is why we call java as object oriented programming right so next coming to vector class in java collections framework so first of all this class vector class is available in java.util package Right, so vector class is inherited from list interface, 
list interface is inherited from collection interface and collection interface is inherited from iterable interface so all the methods of iterable collection list three interfaces can be used in vector class right so vector is a class if you see the description open the command prompt and issue the command so this class so it is a, it should it is inherited from list interface so vector class implements list interface and this class is also random access clonable and serializable right and if you see here this class provides methods which are synchronized which are synchronized most of the methods are synchronized right so let us try to understand this okay so this class is clonable serializable and random access and all these three are marker interfaces which does not have any members or abstract methods so they they are marker interface so marker means they will provide special functionality for our vector class so what is that special functionality so clonable means using clone method which is available in vector class we can create a duplicate vector serializable means we can perform write object and read object of our vector class object which is nothing but serialization and deserialization participation of our vector class object next random access so random access means in vector we have indexes using which we can access elements of a vector randomly from one place to another place one index to another index so these are the three specialities provided by these three marker interfaces now coming to some important points related to the vector class so first of all it is available in java.util package so its default initial capacity is 10 vector accepts duplicate objects next in vector order is preserved so it will store the elements in the same order how we have added the elements into the vector and it provides indexes to the objects and vector is a legacy class so what is this legacy class a class which is clonable serializable and methods are synchronized it is called as legacy class so methods are synchronized means vector class object can participate in multi-threaded environment that is what is synchronized method so multi-threading environment vector class is suitable right so one more point so it stores objects or we can say collection of objects as one dimensional array so same like array list it provides indexes right if you see the constructors and methods of vector class so java p hyphen p java dot util dot vector right so vector class so this is a default constructor which will create a vector object with an initial capacity of 10 so vector of int int means we can give our own capacity 15 20 25 30 initial capacity next vector int comma int so first int indicates capacity something like 20 and second int indicates increasing capacity so 20 plus 5 so when you add 25 elements 25 plus 5 it will become 30 when you add 30 elements 30 plus 5 it will become 35 right and we can also create a vector from other collection from other collection means from array list collection or vector collection also right and vector methods are synchronized so we can use vector object in multi-threaded environment which means that when multiple threads 
are trying to access a common shareable resource JVM will allow only one thread to perform the operation which is called as synchronization so that inconsistency of data wrong data will not appear in our vector object right so vector provides capacity method and size method trim to size so what happens means the capacity will be trimmed to the size if the initial capacity is 10 automatically it will be trimmed to 5 if the number of elements are 5 is empty it will check whether our vector is vector is empty or not next we also have something like first element last element next we also have remove element remove all elements clone so clone allows us to make a vector duplicate of duplicate vector its return type is object format we have to do downcasting to vector format next we also have clear method remove method add so add object allows us to add an object from the end of the vector right so let us try to work with these basic methods and check out how to perform different operations on a vector so one important point here vector class is same as that of array list class but vector is a legacy class array list is a non legacy class in array list methods are not synchronized it is suitable for single threaded application whereas in vector we have synchronized methods hence it is suitable for multi threaded application or environment so let us try to demonstrate this with a small program with the basic methods in vector class example one right take a new page so first we'll write the comment program to perform operations on collection of objects using vector class so first import java.util package take the main class vector class example one with main method so save the program as vector class example one dot java in our working directory right so first we'll execute all cases with different different operations operations means methods one by one so first we'll create a vector vc new vector so the default capacity is 10 first print vc nothing will be there it will be empty vc dot capacity so initial capacity is 10 vc dot size no elements zero vc dot is empty true because initially we don't have any elements right come to the command prompt so compile the program vector class example one dot java right so we have an unclosed comment so let us close that at the end of the program right save it recompile and rerun and run it so empty initial capacity is 10 0 is the size is empty true so if we want we can give our own capacity something like 50 save it recompile and run so the initial capacity is 50 right so now as of now we'll take default capacity as 10 right so now we will add some elements into the vector add 10 20 30 40 50 now print vector with five elements capacity 10 size 5 is empty false right recompile and run so we have initially all the given elements capacity 10 now the size is 5 is empty false right next we'll try to print first element and last element so the first element is 10 
last element is 50 right compile run so first element is 10 last element is 50 right next we will check whether our vector contains a particular element or not it is like searching so vc dot contains 10 so 10 is there true vc dot contains 100 so 100 is not there so for unsuccessful search we'll get the answer as mine okay right so save the program yeah so 10 is there we got it as true we don't have right 100 so the answer is false so return type of contains method is boolean true false for 100 right so next we will add a duplicate object right so vc dot add 10 then again print vector object collection of objects compile run so 10 is added at the last it accepts duplicate objects right next we will check for a particular element and print our own message vc dot contains 40 yes 40 is there so in that situation given element is found else element is not found right so recompile and pre-run so given element 40 is found so let us take something like 44 right so recompile and run so 44 element is not found right so next we will perform cloning operation on a vector right so to create a duplicate vector we will use clone method vc dot clone so it is cloning or making a duplicate vector so the return type of clone method is object class which is a super class for all the classes in java so do the downcasting to vector subclass and store the reference variable in duplicate underscore vc and then we will print duplicate vector class its size next its capacity now capacity of duplicate vector will be same as that of the size but not 10 because it is a cloning we are cloning only the object but not capacity and then is empty false right so come to the command prompt recompile and run so this is a duplicate vector next capacity is 6 size is 6 but here capacity is 10 because we have created the vector using constructor here we have created the vector using clone method and then is empty false so this is how we are supposed to work with vector class and its objects with basic methods in java collection framework thank you for watching this video do like comment and share this video and also subscribe to the YouTube channel Sri Sai IT Hub. Have a nice day.